I just bought what is now probably the coolest thing in my collection. Uh, sealed brand new in the box from 1989 is this Mac Recorder 2.0 which uh, the important part is this piece of hardware right here, which is a serial port audio interface that allows audio input and recording on computers like this. And yes, I'm gonna open it, of course, because something like this deserves to be used. Cut, cut, cut. Now that I got this open, a few things from the back. I hope you can read this. This isn't the greatest camera, but uh, hardware. The Mac Recorder Sound Digitizer features a built-in microphone, mic jack, line-in jack, and input level control. Simply plug the digitizer into the printer or modem port of your Macintosh and use one of the software packages to begin recording. And down here it shows Sound Edit, which says uh, Make Waves. Sound Edit displays the sound graphically in color or black and white. Editing is easy. Open one or more Sound Edit windows and cut, copy, and paste. This is what the Mac recorder itself roughly looks like. Um, these are some other things for HyperCard. I probably won't get into all that too much because nobody really uses it, but technical features here. All three software packages let you record and play sampled sounds at 22k hertz, 11, 7, 5, uh, and compressed, uh, compressed sound at ratios of 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1. This is important because the amount you can of time is uh, limited based on available RAM. And so some of these computers max out at only 4 megabytes of RAM, like this one over here. So uh, being able to record at lower sample rates will allow you to get more than just a short audio recording. Um, down here it shows recommended configuration, Macintosh Plus or later model. So that's that dates back to 1986 is when the Macintosh Plus first came out, beginning of that year. Um, one megabyte of RAM, but I don't think you'd have a very short recording. you got to max a lot of these out. Um, you can get two Mac recorder packages to record in stereo if you want. So you can get two of these, plug one into the modem port, one into the uh, printer port, and record in stereo. Uh, let's see over here. Um, minimum configuration 512KE enhanced requires adapter cable. Uh, right, so that has a different type of port on the back. It doesn't have uh, these sort of serial ports, I guess. So you definitely have to upgrade the RAM because 512K of RAM would not be enough to record anything with this. Okay, I've got the box open and this comes with this like whole ass like thick almost 200 page book about how to use the thing. Uh, it's the floppy disks, the software on floppy disks. I'm assuming they must be 800k so they can run in old SEs and pluses. Um, the disks are inside this bag. I'm not even going to open those because I already downloaded the software on here to play around with before off the internet. Um, and then the Mac recorder itself, which I guess that does look just, uh, oh yeah, just like the one in the box. Um, there's like the uh, ports on it, and this must be the built-in mic right there. There's a volume knob. I don't know if that works on everything or just the built-in mic. I guess we're going to find out. And then this side over here connects to the Mac serial port. It also comes with this, uh, oh, this is a cable, I guess, that runs from uh, this, uh, what is it, like headphone style 3.5 millimeter to RCA. I guess if you want to hook something up to there. And what makes this thing so cool is that Macintosh computers going back as far as like 1985 can still run some surprisingly useful audio software. But before about 1992, they didn't have any audio imports on any Macintosh computers. And uh, not only that, but most of them, other than the high-end models that had new bus slots, there was no way to add. There were no upgrade slots that took audio cards or anything like that. But by going through the serial port, which I might not have even thought was possible, they were able to get audio and make these into recording setups. And here's the computer I'm going to be using to demo this. This is a Macintosh SE, which first came out in 1987. This particular unit shipped with two floppy drives and no hard drive. So you would put in one floppy for your operating system and programs or, you know, and then uh, your files, whatever. You didn't have to shuffle around quite so much. Neither of the floppy drives in this computer works anymore, but I've uh, added a not a hard drive, but a solid state drive, SCSI to SD, so it's an SD card, which has a whopping eight gigabytes of space in there. To give you an idea, if you had uh, splurged and gotten the fancy SE with the hard drive built in, it would have been, I believe, 40 megabytes. Um, this came with one megabyte of RAM. You need as much as you can possibly get to be able to record audio with this, so I have this maxed out at four megabytes, which is the most RAM this computer will take. I have it tri-booting system 7.0.1, which is what I use the most. 7.5.5 uh, is the last version of the operating system that will run on this computer, and 6.08 is kind of the earliest version that will run a lot of modern, <laughs> modern uh, programs. Um, 
I'm going to actually reboot into 6.08 for purposes of using the Mac, Mac recorder because it will free up a little bit of RAM and get me a couple extra seconds. Every bit of RAM you can get counts for this. While I'm at it, I gotta show you something amazing. Watch how fast an operating system designed for booting off of a floppy will boot off of a, an SD card. And there we go. See, look how much extra RAM that bought us. This uses uh, less than half as much system memory, which l gives us an extra five to 600K available. Now I've got the Mac recorder plugged into my modem port because I use the printer port for networking, and now I'm gonna open up SoundEdit, and this is the uh, software that came with it. And in here, I'm gonna go to the settings and show the available options for this device here. So the maximum quality is 22k Hertz. I can go down as low as 5. Um, I can choose mono or stereo if I had two of these since I only have one. Only mono is an option. Uh, there's also various forms of compression you can do and which port you're connected to. This is my modem port. And the available time to record is based again on how much RAM there is in there. So with as much RAM as I could put in and free up on this computer I can record slightly over two minutes at a time at full quality. If I drop the quality way down here, I can get uh, over 10 minutes at a time. Of course, 5K hertz, the quality would suffer quite a bit. The uh, compressions have to be, I guess, these like even compressions in order to actually reduce the time, but I guess it reduces the file size either way. So I'm just going to keep it at full quality for now. Um, and with it plugged in, it's really just as simple as uh, I press the record button and it will run until you, uh, rather annoyingly, until you just move the mouse at all. That will make it stop the recording. Um, or when you run out of the RAM available. So let me hit this record button. And now it's starting to record, and we can see that uh, it's going to show me how many seconds I have left as it slowly climbs up there. I'm going to stop it just quickly. You can see there's the waveform that's produced. Let's play that back. And now it's starting to record, and we can see that uh, it's going to show me how many seconds I have left as it slowly climbs up there. I'm gonna Anyway, that's what we have there. There is a uh, volume level on the side. I think I have that turned up a little bit too high, so if I drop it, that should improve the quality. This is coming from the built-in mic. Um, I actually want to try running um, an XLR to quarter and then down to uh, one of these size jacks through the mic port, and then maybe try the line with a preamp and see what that sounds like in terms of quality, see how good we can get this. It'll be a little difficult to tell what the quality is, sounds like coming out of it because the uh, headphone port on this computer is only in mono, so that'll be a little bit annoying. I guess maybe by holding it in the middle, I should be able to hear it in both speakers. There's also a surprising amount of editing options in here. For example, I can copy this section over here and then go and paste it at the end if I want to just keep adding different stuff, you know, cut, copy, paste things here, then I can highlight, and there are all these effects that can be added. There's like amplify, backwards, uh, bender, echo, envelope, filter, flanger, FM synthesis, noise, reverb, silence, smooth, spectrogram, tempo, and tone generator. Uh, and I'm sure that they all take a very long time to apply on this 8 megahertz CPU, but um, they're, they're in there, and you can do that on these recordings on here. Oh, and here's a ridiculous Easter egg. If you go to About Sound Edit, the program that comes with this, it acts like it's crashing the computer. But you can't click restart. And then it actually tells you about the program, and then you can go to resume to get out of it. That's, I don't know why they chose to do that. That's interesting. Okay, so I really wanted to test the quality potential of this. So I'm running a real mic into a preamp, into the line input on here, and I think I got the volume level set up pretty well. I'm gonna take this file and copy it over the network to the modern computer where I'm editing the video together. Uh, this is what it actually sounds like, the recording quality that it's producing. So there's just been a quick walkthrough of like the unboxing of this thing, but what I really wanna do with it is use a program like Super Studio Session here to record sequence something on here then run the sound out from the built-in audio here into a four track like this and then I can add some real instruments and vocals bring it back in through the Mac recorder twice to get stereo and then essentially entirely do music production on this computer. So yeah, that's uh, what I got this thing for. That's what I'm gonna do with it. There's like the hypercard stuff on here that you can make. I, 
I don't know, maybe I'll look into it at some point. It's not my biggest of priorities right here. I'm sure you can find videos on it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to make some songs using this because uh, most of my songs are shorter than two minutes anyway. So uh, I guess there will hopefully be some videos soon in the future about um, doing music production on this.